I'm Fiona Banner, AKA the Vanity Press. I'm in my studio on the day that my show Pranayama Typhoon opens in Seoul. Sadly, I'm not there, but it's nice to be here talking about the work. And the film's called Pranayama Organ. It's a interplay uh, between two inflatable decoy fighter planes, a typhoon and a falcon. They meet and engage in rituals of combat and intimacy in a desolate landscape with the tide out in the distance. Previously, I've worked with uh, actual physical bits of military hardware. I was really intrigued when I came across the decoy fighter planes, that they're like these toys, and they're also like inflatable boats. They triggered off a lot of thoughts that are com the complete opposite, in fact, of a physical fighter plane, but that they're set up in real life within the military as placebos that can actually be mistaken for a proper arsenal of military hardware really intrigued me because that's so absurd. Is our suspension of disbelief so wide that we actually could mistake something that's so opposite? The idea that you can kind of puff up your chest and be a deterrent and somehow faking actual power can become power. And then that seemed to chime with the, the name of this aircraft, you know, it has, has this name Fighting Falcon. So a falcon, a bird of prey that sort of puffs up and struts but is also obviously a, a, a killer beast in its own right. That, that idea of strutting and posturing and exercising ritual really came into it. The idea, taking the idea of a shamanistic performance or the image of a shamanistic performance and then mixing that in with something that might be a ritual around love or courtship and then something around loneliness and desolation and combat. The soundtrack was recorded in a church on an enormous organ. So this wind instrument and wind passes through the film as an overriding theme. So it, as a wind instrument, it connects with nature. It also has this incredible verbosity in the way that it uh, overblows the emotion of the situation. So there's a posturing element to the soundtrack. Those two things entwined and played together and then I brought in this more combative drum element. Looking at our habits around music really and our, our tastes and rituals, that they're in this desolate landscape is no coincidence and that landscape is redolent of a lot of prehistoric and um, the geology is extraordinary. There's an, a petrified forest underneath these aircraft. The Falcon and the Typhoon are both named after these extreme forces of nature was looking at our conflict with nature as well as our conflict with each other. I guess how we pose and posture is is something we can't take apart from who we are and how we are, you know, how we act out, how we perform. I mean, I guess another thing about it being filmed on the beach is that it gets, it creates a dialogue around borders and channels. Is that a piece of water actually a conduit or a divider between us, in this case, um, the English Channel between England and, and France, but equally it, it could be a, a metaphorical piece of, piece of water. And, you know, that tide is always out within the film. Emotional to engage with nature and engage with our vulnerability within nature and our vulnerability as a, a species. The breathing element of the aircraft really connects to this idea of the organ. You know, the organ as in the corporal body, the organs of the body, the organ as in this rather overblown wind instrument that provides the soundtrack. There's a connection with this phrase, we are all gods with anuses in the, in the film, in that those are aircraft you know, they, they do have noses, they do have wings, 
and they also have anuses and in this case the air is being blown up the back of the of the aircraft so to look at the aircraft sort of as a body to see the correlations with a physical you know with a beast you know in the design are we emulating the natural world it goes beyond the title of you know the the piece that's in the gallery that's very very slowly breathing in and out being called falcon but it also goes into how we delineate and describe and understand and try to create power but what I started calling the umbilical cord, this sort of a uh, plastic, uh, prophylactic conduit between the arse of the aeroplanes and the, and the fan, the ventilator, is, is sort of literally blowing air up the arse of these, <laughs> of these, um, these aircraft. We elevate ourselves as humans, we see ourselves as above nature, we try and use nature, we try and conquer nature, we monetize nature, we see it as a resource, but actually in the end we are nature. You know, we all go back into the compost heap at the end of the day. So something about that phrase connected with the physicality of these aircraft and the um, sort of fragility of nature and how we really need to start recognising and understanding globally that we are, we are of nature and we are subject to nature. I got really interested in them as, as sculpture, you know that they are sculpture, they are these trophy objects uh, that pose and posture and take on this fetish of sculpture but at the same time they're not, they're puffed up with air and they're plastic shells. So. That did make me think about how we create uh, deities out of art, contemporary art or, or, or ancient art, and how we sort of need to move around these objects, uh, create these objects and move around with a weird fear and respect, which brings out strange behaviour in us all in some way. And in the film, when they're, they're puffing up to begin with, almost like a sculpture coming to life and it's kind of ridiculously overblown, <laughs> like oh, the path of sculpture. But so it's sort of laughable, but at the same time, even more laughable than something quite moving and engaging. It's always, it's always transforming, isn't it, into, into another mood or into another shape of object um, or another relationship. With the paintings also because I've made full stops in the past as helium-filled inflatables, but with, in relationship to the, the paintings, they're also representative, if you like, of a breath. You know, what's a full stop on the page? especially in a performative sense. It's the moment where you pause and take breath in order to continue or finish. So there is a connection um, with the fragility of the object or the, the body, but also, you know, the fragility of language because the full stops are kind of, I always see them as, you know, on the edge of sinking down or if they are floating, they're kind of cut adrift and our struggle to maintain meaning within the language that we, we use in a grand international treaties commitment sort of way, but also in a very personal way, just between person, person and persons. The paintings are all fa found paintings, so originally painted by somebody else. And when I find them, they have big seafaring vessels in them, you know, ships and, and um, galleons and all sorts of things, so I paint those out. And then I replace in them uh, full stops, so pieces of, of punctuation. 
tiny little dot on the page, but when you blow them up, they have different scales and forms, so they become like these um, almost sculptural characters in and of themselves. There's a, a rear view mirror, which has an ISBN number on it. An international book standard number, which every book that's sold, for instance, on Amazon or goes through the normal conventional system has to have so I've written that painted that on the mirror and registered it as a publication so it's a one-off registered sculpture that's also a publication and it's titled Gods with Anuses and there's another rear view mirror that uh, has bad review written on it so that's a sort of play with tense do we give ourselves a bad review do we give our relationship with nature a bad review do we uh, really move around everything in this way, constantly forming a judgment in language, or do we not? How, how, how do we relate to art and, and our moment?